Hey everyone, this is Manisa Robinson, and in this video I'm going to show how to wood burn a portrait. Now for this project I am working on basswood, and I am using the Walnut Hollow Creative Versatool and the shading point for most of the project. In some cases I will switch over to the razor tip with the spoon shader just to kind of block in some of the hair. So to start with I'll use the upper tip of the shading point and start blocking in the main features of the eyes. I think that the eyes are the most important feature in a portrait so I like to start with them first and make sure that everything is okay with the eyes before I move on because if they aren't right then your whole portrait is going to kind of be off. And for this first step I like to turn the burner down so I have more control. Then I'll go back over everything and start darkening things up slowly, just working in layers and going over these main features again. When burning the iris you'll notice that the eye is kind of a general mid-tone and then it's darker around the edges. Now for the eyebrows you want to build up those values using multiple strokes and be sure to add shading to the whites of the eyes as well. Just because they are white doesn't mean that they're solid white. There will be shading in there also. After I have the eyes started I'm going to go ahead and start developing some of the contouring and shading around the eyes. I'm using the upper tip of the shading point in just some small back and forth really smooth motions. I'll continue to develop the main features including the nose, just kind of work on those little what I call topography zones, the slight variations in line and form around those main features. Portraits can be very tricky in any medium, but they are especially difficult in wood burning because you cannot erase. So I like to start out a lot lighter than the end result will be and slowly build up my values through multiple layers of shading. It's also really important to not burn heavy outlines around the main features of the face. Instead, try to use negative space and shading to create those shapes. And I like to turn the temperature down on the wood burner to give me just a lot more control in these areas. You don't want to create any accidental burns or scorch marks as you work. After I have the main features of the face started, I'm going to switch over and start burning the framework around the face. So this is going to include the hair and the ears and everything that is around the face. The model in this picture has fairly dark hair, so creating these dark zones around the face is also going to help me set my darkest value for the wood burning, which will allow me to correctly adjust all the values as I go. If some of my darkest areas are too light, then my shading throughout the entire portrait is also going to be too light. So it's really important to get your darkest values set fairly early on in the project. I really prefer using the Versatool and the shading point for most everything, but when it comes to long hair, it can be really time consuming. So you'll notice sometimes I'll switch over to the razor tip and the spoon shader just to block in some of these values and make the hair go a little bit faster. Then I'll switch back over to the Versatool to do some of the fine tuning and blending. And when it comes to burning hair, multiple layers are very important. It's difficult to burn hair accurately in just one pass. So it's important to build up that hair in multiple layers to really create the depth that it needs. And just like when burning the skin and facial features, I like to start out kind of light when burning the hair and then go over it, add those multiple layers and slowly start building up your values. And this might take a while, so just really be patient while building up these layers. And one thing to remember when wood burning is that darker values seem to push away from the viewer and they look farther away and lighter values seem to be closer. So by making sure you have a wide range of values in the hair, you can create kind of some darker areas that seem to push back and lighter areas that pull forward. So that can create a little bit more depth in your project. When burning longer hair, try to use longer strokes and make sure that they all kind of flow in the same direction as the hair but remember that each hair isn't exactly parallel with the others They're, they are going to fluctuate slightly so make sure to put in a few random pieces kind of going one way and then another you don't want everything exactly parallel hair also has a lot of these inverted v-shaped areas so you can kind of block those in and then fill in the rest of the area with more mid-range hair strokes. 
After the basics of the hair are in place, then I'm going to go back over and kind of adjust the overall values and darken everything as a whole. A lot of times I like to sneak up on my project and it's sometimes too light and so you just keep going back over and adding more layers and pushing your values a little bit darker as you go. Once the hair is mostly burned, I'm going to start working on the shadow side of her face, just laying in some really smooth shading um, for the skin tones and multiple layers will help take out some of the blotchiness. Just make sure that you use a real soft, even pressure. If you push down really hard, in some cases, it'll make a little bit of an extra burn mark. So just use real light pressure. A lot of times I'll use a lower temperature as well. And then just burn lots and lots of layers of shading for a, a smoother appearance. I think it's really important not to rush portraits. And there are so many different dynamics going on within the face with the forms and the values that it takes a lot of time to build those up. So by working slowly with a lower temperature and multiple layers of shading, it really helps to avoid mistakes in the long run. At this point, I have a really good start on the face. So I'm gonna move on and start blocking in some of the areas of her neck and her shoulder area. This is gonna be, again, lower temperatures with multiple layers of shading. And just keep your strokes really close together so it doesn't look all stripey and splotchy and slowly start developing some of the lighter areas, the lighter topography zones, as I like to call. Now that I have all of the individual elements in place, I like to take a step back and see where I need to make adjustments to everything as a whole. Sometimes we get so focused on each individual element that we forget to stop and see how, how do all of these individual elements work together? How are the neighboring zones reacting to each other? Are they too light? Are they too dark? Do they need more contrast? So at this point, it's good to kind of go back over the entire project and look for minor areas that need adjustment. Personally, this is where I take a lot of my values darker. I think with a lot of wood burnings, we quit too early, we quit too soon, and our wood burnings turn out too light. We tend to focus on the darker areas because that's what we burn, but don't forget that there is a lot of information in those lighter areas too. And in order to add in more shading in those lighter areas, you have to push your darks dark enough. You really need to have that full range of values within your project. So take the time to really push those darks. That will give you a lot more room for the mid-tones and then the lighter mid-tones with throughout the picture. When burning, I try to save the unburned wood for my purest white highlights, like in the eyes. Everything else needs just a little bit of shading. So I'll go ahead and burn a really, really light amount of shading across the lightest areas of her face. That allows you to be able to blend some of those lighter mid-tones into those highlighted areas of her face. And since shading is kind of a balancing act, when we darken one area such as her face, then we need to go back and darken up the other areas such as her shoulder and her neck so that everything works together like it should. This project is also available on my Patreon page as a real-time full-length video tutorial. It's also available as a written PDF with step-by-step -step photos and instructions, and it comes with a hand-drawn pattern. So if you're interested in that, just hop on over to my Patreon page. The link is in the description down below. So to finish out this portrait, I'm just going to take some time to make some minor adjustments, um, add in a lot more blending and softening of the skin values, correcting any little areas, and just smoothing out the overall texture. So I hope you enjoyed this little video, and thank you so much for watching. If you have any other ideas as far as future projects, be sure to let me know in the comments below.